Yo, uh, it's been quite a while. Um, my bad. I plan on being way more active on Twitch and YouTube, and I want to get a regular schedule going for at least Twitch. Um, yeah, but for now, I'll just drop by with another tutorial that some people have been asking me for, and that would be a basic skin shader, including subsurface scattering um, for DAS characters. So yeah, let's just get started. Um, if you don't know how to properly import DAS characters into Cinema 4D, um, you can watch my workflow video I did a while back. It's quite a long one, but explains every basic thing you need to know. Um, yeah, so when you convert the regular DAS materials, or Cinema 4D materials in this case, to the Octane ones, you get something like the torso up here. So it'll be most likely a regular diffuse material. You just change that into glossy usually, but what we want to do is um, universal. Also make sure that the specular is set to white, because sometimes when converting them it's uh, black or gray, but I explained all of this uh, in my DAS2 Cinema workflow video. So when we go universal, you usually end up with something looking like this. And that's because the metallic is cranked all the way up. Um, let me also begin by saying uh, the way the subsurface scattering works is entirely dependent on the maps you're using. Different maps equal uh, different results. That should be um, that should be something to keep in mind. But yeah, let's just start off by turning the metallic down. I already have four subsurface materials prepared for this one. So if I go into um, the node editor, as you can see, we have the albedo. So we got a bunch more options compared to the regular glossy material. So but don't stress it, it'll all be pretty much fine. So I start off by just copying this one. See what I got. So since we're going with the torso, let's start with the normal map for the torso. Put that into the normal. Copy it again. Go for the uh, specular map. Just put that into the specular. You can see the changes happening at the top left. Um, I'll copy the normal again and drag in the bump. Now sometimes you have a um, subsurface scattering map already included in the character maps. Um, they usually are named the same but most of the time with an SSS at the end or in between something like that. But in our case we do not and we don't quite necessarily need it. Um, since this is just a basic version of it anyway to still achieve decent looks. So what I'll be doing now is um, dragging in an RGB spectrum or in the new Octane version you can just hit Shift C and do it like this. Then you put this into the transmission and as you can see on the top, li or top left it's letting in light by the color you're choosing. So if we were to go purple, then you get a purple. Um, so we'll just do a, a slightly reddish orange just to kind of get a meaty look going on. Keep it like this and what you want to do next is go under medium and for this one we'll choose the good old scattering medium not the random walk medium um, that's new with Octane 2020. I haven't played around with that too much in terms of achieving subsurface scattering on skin. Just other basic subsurface scattering stuff. But yeah, let's just go with the scattering medium. And what we want to do now is plug that same RGB spectrum into the scattering. That means um, that scattering medium is scattering the light by using this RGB spectrum as uh, the color. and what I'll do now is drag the albedo or diffuse map into the absorption channel. And that's basically it for the basic material setup. Um, density at 100 is regular, volume step length 4 is regular as well. And we'll keep it like that for now. 
And instead of doing this over and over for every material you converted, you can just uh, copy it by holding um, control, opening it up, and then you just replace the maps with the different three parts or with the different maps for all the different remaining three parts. So head, torso, arms, legs are all the four that you will need in terms of DAS characters. And once you've done that, you can just use the copied material and drag it into the old one by holding Alt and replacing it, which I'll do with uh, the prepared ones as well. So as you can see, is we got the same thing going on for all four of them. And now I'll just start by uh, starting the live viewer, or just to make sure that we're on the same page in terms of settings. It's path tracing at a thousand samples for now. Um, ray epsilon with an additional zero, so we got no clipping going on in the eye moisture. That is also explained in my old DAS tutorial um, in the uh, workflow to cinema, so be sure to check that out. Um, GI clamp down to 10 is fine. It's usually usually at like 10k, but uh, 10 is just fine. It determines how much light is being let into your scene. Um, yeah, so let's just get an octane light source going on. You can see not that much is happening. And usually when you plug in an octane light, your view changes to uh, guard shading. So I always just change that back to quick shading. So the light, uh, the live viewer, uh, the viewport gets less confusing. Now I'll just turn this down a bit, go right here and um, scale it down a bit and make sure that it's not clipping. And I'll just change the coordinates to 180. And you can already see some subsurface scattering going on right here. What I'll do now is um, deactivating uh, the visibility or and turning it down to zero so you get a better look of what's going on so let's just uh, maybe change the power a bit uh, under light settings turn it down to like 17 never go above 100 also we could change it from black body to texture then let's plug in an RGB spectrum and make this uh, red, like maybe a reddish color. That's very extreme, very extreme. Something like this maybe. We could also turn it into a blue. So you can see better contrast of how the light is um, refracting inside the skin. And the values that you picked determine the look of everything so make sure to adjust the density settings to your scene and to the look that you're going for so let's make sure for now so the legs are at 80 let's just keep them at 100 as well but for just showing you what's going on let's turn all of this down to 20 so as you can see it's letting way more light through way more um, the legs are at 20 and the face needs to be at 20 as well. So now you can see what's going on. Um, the face is looking especially weird because when the... Oh, there's something different going on in terms of the values aren't matching up with the face and the torso, which is... I'm not sure why that is. It's 2040, it should be the same. The torso is uh, 24, my bad, not 40. To circumvent this, I'll just copy the torso. And um, since this material is not having issues with any seams except for the head, I'll just replace all the needed maps pick um so those are the new ones so i should be going normal specular and bump and then replace this with the old face 
Now, there we go. That fixed it. Rename this face. I'm not quite sure what was happening there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the less dense uh, your material is, the way weirder it will look because the mouth and the eyes are still solid objects, so they will pass through right here, as you can see. Um, let's ignore the light for now and activate an HDRI. So, remove this. So we have an HDRI activated and then make sure that this is a visible environment and turn it back on. Resend it. There we go. Got a black background now. Way more visible. And that's quite an extreme result going on right here. So you always want to adjust your subsurface scattering settings according to the lights in your scene. So I'll just do 8 and 100 and do the same for everything else. 100 and 8. Also volume step length is um, the detail itself in the generated volume as far as I remember correctly. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but usually 4 is fine as well if you keep it like that. We can also go uh, maybe even 200 to make sure that it's not too extreme, which it probably still is. Like As I said, you need to make sure to adjust these settings accordingly. Well, let's keep it at 200 for now, for all of them. 200 and 200 and 200. Maybe change the light again to a... Well, let's keep it like this so we can see the changes in the skin itself. Turn it up a bit and copy this um, light source. Place it maybe here, below the hand. So let's rotate it 90 degrees, something like this. Put it in here and make sure it's not clipping through because we don't want that. And then you can see what's happening with the hand itself. So let's turn this into maybe a bit more reddish color. which is pretty extreme, so we turn it down, turn it down so you can get a better look of what's going on. Turn it white again to even make it more visible. And now get back into the arms again. So if I were to turn this down to 100, you can see way more light is being let through again now. And it's also possible to um, change the way the absorption is being handled by plugging in a color correction. And now I'll just do store render buffer to get an AB comparison going on. So let's do it at this point around here and turn the gamma down. As you can see, it's being brightened up, so it's letting way more light through. I could increase the contrast even, so it's going way crazier than expected, uh, than wanted, and restore this. I could remove the saturation. Now you can see that it's oh, not as red anymore. It's still almost the same but it's letting way less light through, so let's keep it at 1, turn it to the max. Now you can see it's way brighter as well. And those are all the bunch of things you need to consider when creating your scene.
Oh, so let's get this in here again. Wait, was I? No, I wasn't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. I was confused for a second that I just played around with a color correction node inside there. Um, but yeah, you get what I mean. So it's always dependent on the scene you're on, um, on the light sources you're using, on the HDRIs you're using. Of course, it works with Octane, Day Octane Daylight as well. Let's just uh, remove the AB comparison and remove this light, turn this reddish and you can see just let's just do it like this so everything is being captured right now which is a really extreme look I'll just turn this down and I'll uh, zoom in let it denoise real quick Just to show you uh, one thing, that is, let's just store the buffer again and let me turn those into glossy materials so you can see the difference in re uh, refraction happening. So you can see at the ears it's way more visible than anywhere else at the moment because of the uh, density we set of the light refracting through here at the armpits as well and just in general it gets a bit more saturated and that always changes on the maps you're using so for example if I were to go for a brighter skin color or a different kind of HDRI let's just rotate this real quick So now bring, skin gets brighter and now if I were to choose an even brighter type of skin color, plug that into the albedo and into the absorption. So immediately you got a whole nother look going on. Very bright skin, um, different contrast and it all comes down to the maps you're using, to the light sources, to the HDRIs and yeah. That's basically it for uh, the basic aspect of it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, feel free to drop any kind of suggestions for future stuff down below. And yeah, thanks for sticking around and good luck experimenting and all that stuff.